So you want to learn how to get into orbit in Juno New Origins? Well, in this improved and updated tutorial, I'm going to show you how. Before we start, this video is going to be split into three parts. The first part is going to be how to build a orbital rocket that can get into low drew orbit. The second part is going to be how to get into low drew orbit. And the third part is going to be how to efficiently get into orbit from planets that don't have an atmosphere like Luna. All these parts will be timestamped in the description. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to want to think about whilst making this rocket is how much delta V we need to get to orbit. To be safe, I'm going to make a rocket with around 5 kilometers a second of delta V. It's going to be a very simple design with just two stages. The fuel is going to be Kerolox, and we're going to be using gas generator 1 engines for both the first and the second stage. And of course, we're going to optimize the second stage engine so it's optimal for the vacuum of space. We can do this by increasing the nozzle size. And the first stage engines are going to be smaller nozzles, but not too small. We're going to go middle ground. I'm also going to add some gimbal to both the first and second stage engines. For the first stage, I like to have around 1.8 to 1.9 minutes of burn time. We're of course going to have an above one thrust to weight ratio on the first stage. But for this rocket, I'm not going to make it too high. And on the second stage, we could go below one thrust to weight ratio, but I'm going to go around a bit above one as well. The biggest thing that you have to worry about when going to orbit on Drew is the atmosphere. This is going to slow us down a lot, meaning we'll need more delta V. So it's good practice to make our rocket quite aerodynamic. And that's why I'm adding this cone on top of the command pod. But when we go to orbit planets that don't have an atmosphere like Luna, we're going to take off this cone because it's basically unnecessary and it's extra weight we don't need. Now that our rocket's ready to fly, we're going to jump into the Drew Space Center launch pad and prepare ourselves to go to orbit. Now that we're on the launch pad, we're going to get ready to launch. First, we're going to bring up the translation tools and then hit the lock heading button. Next, we're going to click the camera icon and we're going to click the 2D mode. As of the release of this video, this mode currently isn't out on the main version, but it is out in the public beta and hopefully you'll have it because it makes things a lot easier for new players. Next, we're going to activate our engines and then throttle up. And we want to start heading east with our pitch. And this almost entirely depends on how fast your rocket's going to be going and the height it's going to be at. And my launch profile isn't exactly perfect by any means actually quite inefficient but that's why we brought along the extra delta v so we're going to keep pitching over to the east and you need to keep in mind that drew's atmosphere reaches up to around 80 kilometers now so i'm going to try and get my apoapsis at least up to 100 kilometers you can see how high your apoapsis is either in the map view or you can click on the flight info panel and it will say right here how high our apoapsis is as well as how long it is until we get to our apoapsis which is quite important as well and this menu generally has a bunch of useful information in it eventually we're going to run out of first stage we're going to hit our second stage we're still within the atmosphere when we activate our second stage so we are going to be a little bit inefficient and low thrust to weight here but we should be able to get up especially with the momentum the first stage has given us now with your second stage as you begin to increase your speed and height you can be super efficient by lowering your throttle and waiting until you're at the apoapsis with your second stage and then going higher throttle and just staying around the apoapsis that would be the most efficient way and you can see me do this here and now we are in orbit. Getting to orbit really isn't that hard. As long as you have enough delta V and your rocket's designed pretty well, you should be able to get there quite easily every time. And the more you get to orbit, the more this will improve your skill of optimizing engines, optimizing stages, and you'll generally get better at designing your rockets to be more efficient. Next, we're going to move on to orbiting planets that don't have an atmosphere. When it comes to orbiting planets that don't have an atmosphere, we have the significant advantage of no atmosphere. This means we don't have to make aerodynamic rockets, as well as we're in the vacuum of space, so we can make ultra-efficient engines by making the engine belt as big as possible. And most of the planets in Juno that have no atmosphere are lower gravity than Drew, which means we can have way lower thrust as well. So of course we're going to build the rocket and I'm just going to take the entire first stage off my original rocket and use only the second stage because it's already optimized for vacuum. We're going to take the nose cone off because that is completely unnecessary because we don't have to worry about drag or anything like that. And with a moon like Luna we can go really low in the pitch numbers because we don't have to worry about the higher gravity pulling us down into the ground or the drag. So as you can see here I am skimming the surface but we are not slowing down because we are of course accelerating. And there we have it, you can see I have a significant amount more second stage fuel here than I did from Drew, which means we can do all sorts of activities, and it makes getting back from moons with no atmosphere quite easy, so you could do sample return missions from these places quite easily, and stuff like that. And I also have a video on how to get to Luna if you want to learn how to get to Luna. 
there should be a card in the top right, as well as I have a series on all different other planets such as TT, Taurus, Silero, and more coming in the future. So hopefully this improved orbital tutorial has helped you out, especially any new players out there. I want to give a massive thanks to our members Pedro and ISA Industries for supplying the funding for the music you can hear in this video, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.